Hi, the humble volume control on an amplifier. Seems mysterious, but it's really not. Coming up next. Greetings, the Astro 30 here yet again, and I just wanted to do a little simple video here for you of how to correctly wire up a potentiometer as a volume control. This sort of touches on that Elliott Sound Products preamp that I was having trouble with the master volume control with, because I wired it backwards. So we're going to hook this up to a signal generator and an oscilloscope, and we're going to measure it how it's supposed to work correctly and also incorrectly. But first, I need to talk about the way it's normally wired. So this is normally how you would see it drawn on a schematic. We've got our potentiometer here, shown as a resistor with a line coming off somewhere near the middle of it, indicating that it's a variable resistor. Now these pots are usually logarithmic pots, that is, they start with an A before their number, in this case, this is an A50K, which makes it a 50K logarithmic single gain pot. You have your input coming in to usually the clockwise position, because if it's wired, if it's wired the reverse way round, where the ground and the clockwise are in, inverse, then maximum control rotation will be minimum, if you get what I mean. So usually the input comes in on the clockwise position, comes out of the wiper, which is the center, and the ground is then connected to the counterclockwise position pin. Okay, so take this badly drawn schematic representing the pot as it's viewed from the front. Keep that in mind. We've got the ground here over here on pin one, which is that one, the counterclockwise position. So that's C, C, W. Pin three is clockwise. Pin three is over here, which is the clockwise, as I just said. And this center one, is our wiper, and that's the way it would look as you wire it to the pot. However, I want to touch on something important. A lot of the older Japanese amplifiers had a potentiometer, which was a dual gang, but on each side of the pot, there was four connections. So effectively, there is two centers or two wipers. The reason for that is this one marked L used to go off to your loudness switch to increase the low end response when the control was near its minimum travel. And as the control was rotated higher and higher towards its maximum, then the effect of this loudness circuit would be reduced, meaning basically the frequency response at the low end would start to roll off back to flat. And they used the volume control uh, to achieve that because at the lower settings, because our ears are logarithmic, it may not pick up certain types of frequencies at a lower volume, so that was used to boost it. And because the circuit knew what the volume control position was, it could adjust how much boost to give to those frequencies accordingly. So this may appear confusing when you actually open an amplifier and see a pot with four pins on it. So as badly drawn as this is, this is supposed to represent that type of pot as viewed from the front with pins one, two, three, four. So these two in the center would be the two wipers, but usually, and don't quote me on this because they can be different between manufacturers, you have to check their data sheet. One is the ground, two is the normal wiper, which goes here, three is the loudness wiper, and four is the clockwise position. However, some manufacturers may reverse these pins around here, two and three, or they may reverse the order of the pins altogether. So you've got to actually measure the thing with a multimeter to see which resistance is what. Basically, that means this, this four pin pot is basically two gangs within the same single gang pot. And because it's a dual gang pot in the first place, because it's stereo, that means there's a total of four gangs, two per gang if that makes sense. Anyway, back to what we're actually focusing on, which is wiring up a volume control correctly. I'm going to set this up with a, a, a signal generator and oscilloscope on the correct pins, 
we're going to ignore this pin now because it's no longer relevant and just see how it operates when we rotate the pot. Alright, here's my setup. I've got my pot wired with the signal generators ground there on the counterclockwise position, the signal generators output on the clockwise position and the oscilloscope goes off from the ground here because these are electrically connected and the output of the pot goes to the positive uh, lead of the oscilloscope. So now if you guys just focus on the oscilloscope screen I'll just gradually rotate the control and so we can see we've got a nice smooth increase on the signal until roughly towards the end where it suddenly starts to shoot up. So we've got a gradual decrease back to zero and if we do it the other way we've got a slight increase, slow increase slow increase, then about there it starts to shoot up to full. Now the signal going in like its frequency is irrelevant and the voltage is irrelevant although I've got 4.485 volts, no 4.45 volt coming out which is fine. So yeah that's how the volume control should work when wired correctly. So how about now if that's wired incorrectly? And what I mean about that is, I mean, we switch the outputs and inputs around. So that would now be uh, out there at the clockwise position. And our input would now be at the wiper. So I'll just turn that down and I'll swap these two connections around. If I so can. And, well, most of you will know what will happen but for the sake of completeness let's do it and I will explain my thoughts on why it's doing it. Now some of you may be asking why am I doing this? Well because some of you may not know how to wire a control properly. Others may do but this is basically for the people that are new to electronics that want to add a volume control to something. So that's the whole entire purpose of this demonstration. So now if I rotate the control we get a sudden increase and as I keep rotating it, not much is happening. Slowly increasing now towards the middle of the pot. And by the end of the pot, we've got no increase. As I rotate the pot, just to prove that I'm not going insane, from complete counterclockwise to just rotating it slightly, we're getting boom, sudden increase and then not much is happening over the rest of the travel of the pot. We're already at our full 4.45 volt, almost near maximum, and there's only a slight increase between the center which is about there which is now at 4.12 to fully maximum which is 4.45 and below that We've got very limited range control and it just suddenly shoots up from ground. So why is the operation different? Well, if you wire it the conventional way, this is a logarithmic pot. As I said before, it's marked A50K. The A means basically logarithmic. The linear version of the pot is marked with a B. And there are special audio tapers which are marked with a C, but they're very uncommon to get hold of these days. But the A's and the B's are more common, which is also a good reason why you've got to make sure you get the correct type of pot for the application. In this case the volume control should be logarithmic because linear will not work correctly. So why does this pot not work correctly when these uh, inputs and outputs are switched around? We're now basically turning this pot into the reverse logarithmic law. In other words, Theoretically now, because these inputs and outputs are switched around and there's a difference in resistance between the center and the outer and the center and the lower, which is the uh, counterclockwise position, we've now turned it into a linear pot. And a linear pot will not work without special trickery as a volume control. Just keep that in mind. That is my thought on it. 
without going into impedances, the impedances of the circuit do not matter at this point. You can have a high impedance as an input and a high impedance as the output. Or you can have a low impedance as the input and a low impedance as the output or low as in, high as out. It, the, the Z or impedance of the two circuits connected between the control do not matter at this stage. How the control is wired does. So we're actually messing with the log law of this pot by wiring it backwards, in a sense, turning it into a linear pot. So this may become a trap for young players that are new to electronics and haven't actually ever wired a volume control before. It is important how it is wired. This is the correct configuration. The signal path goes that way through the pot. So the input's here, the output's always at the wiper, depending on the application. But for this type of volume control, that's how it should be wired. If you wire these two backwards, then you're reversing the log law of the pot and effectively turning it into a linear. And I will stress again, a linear pot does not make a good volume control. Because most of the loudness of the amplifier is controlled right down the very extreme bottom end of the control. And not much happens through the rest of the travel. And that's the reason why. I mean, a, a linear pot isn't as extreme as the log pot with the connections reversed. It does work a little bit more smoother than that, but that's irrelevant. And that is also a dig at the Chinese that make all these kits with uh, pots on them, such as this one. That amplitude pot is a linear pot, but the way it's configured on the uh, control chip that's in there, it's not really relevant to it. But if that was wired as a volume control should be at the output and it was linear, it won't work as effectively as it should. So all good things to keep in mind. So I'll just leave this on the screen for a minute so you can see that that's how it's supposed to be wired. And don't make a dumb mistake like I did and wire it the, kind of cl the clockwise position and the wiper backwards. You'll get weird results as tested on an oscilloscope. I hope that you go down below, hit the like button, maybe leave a comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and you can also become a patron for as little as $1 a month. The links are in the description as usual. Anyway, this is Yasho3 saying, see ya, have a great day.